Here to talk more about this, Leslie Pacey, an environmental investigator with the Government Accountability Project, and Scott Smith, an independent testing expert who conducted tests in East Palestine that don't align with what the EPA says are their results. To you both, thank you. I want to start with the fact that there was supposed to be a field hearing today in East Palestine to further address this. It has now been postponed. Is this yet another punch in the gut for the people of East Palestine who so desperately want answers. Scott, I'll start with you. Yeah, Marty, first of all, uh, you know, thanks for having us. Um, we don't know. I'll, I can say that the EPA has a BO problem and it's not body odor, it's bureaucratic obfuscation. And uh, and the, thank God for the Government Accountability Project reaching out for me. I'm documenting all the emails every turn they're obfuscating and we really don't know what is going on we know what uh the reason is the budget crisis do we believe that no but it, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes hence why I'm working so closely and so appreciate to be working with the Government Accountability Project. So Leslie let me bring you in here talk about this lawsuit uh what you all allege and what you're seeking Yes, um, we filed the lawsuit yesterday against the EPA because we are seeking information about dioxin and dioxin compounds called furons. We're also looking for any other chemical information. Uh, we just feel as though there's just not enough information out there for people. And if we're relying on the EPA's narrative, it's a narrative that everything's okay. Uh, that's not what Scott Smith is finding. This is why GAP is representing Scott as a citizen whistleblower. And it's not uh, what the residents are telling um, Scott and other people that they're very sick. And I've been talking to some residents and they are very sick. They're dealing with all sorts of new symptoms that they didn't have prior to this train derailment. So, um, we don't believe that the EPA's narrative is is uh, correct, and we want to find out one way or another. So the the lawsuit is was brought because while we filed the FOIA, they did not want to expedite processing. They said we didn't prove our case that it was a public health threat, um, that it was an imminent concern, and we disagree. We we need to find those answers to determine that we 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 aren't there yet. Scott, tell me about your latest testing results, because as I mentioned, they don't align with the EPA. What have you found in East Palestine? Yeah, uh, I want to be clear. It's not that they don't align because you can't find what you don't look for. The EPA is not testing residents that are reporting health symptoms. The EPA is refusing to test their soil and their property. And the EPA needs to answer as to why. And however, you know, we're not, we're finding somewhere, and this is ongoing data, between 20 to 30 percent of the soil samples in particular exceed background levels of dioxins. And background levels are, are you know, agreed to by experts across the country. A background level is where uh, you know, residential soil has not been impacted by an event like a rail explosion, an oil pipeline, and, and so on. And Leslie, for your part, much is at stake here. What is your message to the residents of East Palestine, some who have already left their homes and others who can't afford to? Our message is that we want to hear what's going on in their lives. We want to hear their stories. We want to be able to help them build their case that there is an issue for them. Um, you know, certainly the, the FOIA is a step in that direction, but hearing all their stories um, is, is the other piece to this. And we do want to hear what's going on with people. We also want to know if there's any whistleblowers out there um, from government or contractors, anything of that nature, because we can, we are a whistleblower organization and we can talk to them anonymously. They don't have to come out and lose their jobs, that kind of thing. But we are interested in speaking to people and getting at the truth. And that requires people like Scott, and it requires FOIAs, and it requires whistleblowers that are so essential to Scott. getting at the truth. Scott, I'll give you the final word here. I have less than a minute, but has the EPA responded? And what's your current relationship with members of the EPA as they investigate this? Well, my offer with the EPA and the railroad remains open to test side by side with them. They're on record accepting, you know, my lab and, and they use the same lab I do and they don't dispute my results. But, you know, they try to dispute my logic in testing. My logic is simple. 
The EPA, a resident calls me, EPA has refused to test my property, Scott. I have health symptoms. Will you test it? That's my methodology, and that's why I test. And you know, and uh, you know, and my offer remains open for a professional, respectful dialogue with the EPA. But every time I try that, the EPA tries to undermine the work, and and they gaslight the community. And that and that the saying that the symptoms are psychosomatic or it's from your perfume. The health symptoms were not ubiquitous in the environment with from the female issues to the coughing of blood in children prior to the derailment. It's that simple. You really don't even know need to do testing to know something is going on in the community with health. Well, I've spoken to many people in East Palestine. I know they're very thankful for both of you advocating for them and you continue to do so. Uh, Leslie Pacey and Scott Smith, thank you both. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.